the Janitor package has a whole bunch of functions that make your life easier for data cleaning. And today I'm going to show you my most favorite functions from that package. And to start off, let me show you the one function that I use everywhere. In my quarter file, you can see that I've already included a code chunk that loads a data set and then shows its names. The data set isn't that important, I mean we can look at it if you want, it has a whole bunch of information in it and it is a data set from the Tidy Tuesday challenge. If you look at the table like this, you see that there are already annoying back ticks because the column name here has white spaces and that makes it very tedious to use this column in calculations because then you will have to write out this back tick. And if you look at all of the column names, then you see that there are a whole bunch of more columns that follow that pattern. They have capital letters, they have white spaces, they have special characters. All of that is kind of annoying for programming and the janitor has one function that makes it all go away. You see what you can do is load the janitor package and then take your data set and pass it to the clean names function. In this data set you immediately see that all the names use only lower caps and also all the white spaces are gone. And here you can see that I used the full name, I called it clean names function via its full name by prefixing it with the package name. And I did that just to show that this is how you can call this function without ever calling the library. Here I just wanted to highlight this in particular because I use this function, this combination generate clean names basically in all of my projects. And this is why I most of the time automatically write janitor clean names because I rarely have to load the full package. In any case, if you pass all of this to the names function, you see here that all of the names were cleaned up nicely and even the special characters like the percent signs, they were translated to percent. So this function alone makes the janitor package worth installing because it saves you so much time piping out stupid column names. But the janitor package can do much more. It is also great for cleaning up Excel files because it has a couple of built-in functions that are neat for cleaning up common patterns that you see in Excel file. Here I have an Excel file that is rather typical. First you have some line that describes some metadata, in this case when the data was most recently refreshed. Then there are empty rows and some empty columns. The date column is particularly annoying because it doesn't even show you dates and all of this makes it super annoying to read in an Excel file like this. You see the thing is if you load the data as is you will have all of these annoying things. You have the weird row in the beginning, you have the empty columns, the empty rows and the dates will be all wrong. But Janitor has a nice way to clean all of that up so let's check that out. Let's create a new code chunk. And then we can call the read Excel function from the read Excel package. And there we just have to specify the file name of the Excel file that we want to load. And if we do that, let me minimize this here, we see that we do get a tibble and it looks like it's mostly the data. But when you look at it, you see that the column names are all messed up. And this comes from the first row in our Excel file. Remember that one with the metadata when the data was most recently refreshed. So here we can use the skip argument to skip that first row when we read it. And that way we get nicer column names, but they are still kind of tedious. They do use white spaces and different lower and upper letters. And by now we know that we can easily fix that with the clean names function. Apparently I forgot to load the janitor package earlier. So let's throw this in there and now the clean names function works. And what you also see is that you already get a bunch of warning messages about things looking weird. But let's ignore this for a second. For now what we can do is to remove the columns and rows that do not have any information. We already see here that there's a row with all NAs. And this is the one that we saw in our Excel file that didn't have anything in there. And similarly, we know that the do not edit column from the Excel file also didn't have any information at all. And we can get rid of that by using the remove empty function and it will automatically get rid of empty rows and empty columns. In that function, if you look into the documentation, you can see that you have this which argument that tells you if you want to remove rows or columns and by default it is set to rows and columns. You could even change cutoff values. So if there is a column or row that has only 1% of the entries filled, you could put this in there. But most of the time I just use the remove empty as is to get rid of the completely empty rows and columns. 
All right, let's have a look at our data now. We see here that in our Excel file, if we remove the empty row, then that column active doesn't have anything. It's always yes, so it doesn't have any information at all that's useful to us. And with the janitor, you can easily remove such kind of columns by removing those that have just constant values in them. And with that, you get rid of this active column. You see here that in the previous output, the active column was still there. Once you remove the constant, you have now nine instead of 10 columns and you don't have the active column anymore. And finally, one of the things that is super annoying with Excel is that it doesn't give you the dates in a nice date time format. Think about this higher date column. In there are double values and that's not a date. And you can try to wrap your head around of what's the how to convert this to an actual date. But the nice thing with Janitor is that you don't have to do that. You can just pass your data to mutate, target the higher date column and override it by using the Excel numeric to date function and sticking the column that has the weird Excel numeric instead of a date in there. And if you execute this, you immediately see that our higher date is now an actual date column. And the things that you see in that column are actually dates that you can work with. So as you can see, the janitor package helps you a whole lot to clean up Excel files or messy data in general very easily and very fast. But there are even more convenience function that janitor gives you. Let's check out one more and this one will surprise you because this will also teach you something weird about R. You see, if you take a sequence that starts at 0.5 and goes to 4.5 in a one step increment, then you can see that, well, this is exactly what you'd expect. It's 0.5, 1.5, 2.5 and so on. But now what happens if you want to round this? So if you throw the round function on top of that, you see that it doesn't actually round to the numbers as you'd expect. At least for me, I'd expect that everything that ends in 0.5 will automatically be rounded up. But this seems to not be the case. The 0.5 is rounded to zero. The 1.5 is rounded to two the 2.5 is rounded to 2 as well. And this is something that is known as banker's rounding. And it is really surprising that R does this. But I think I've read about a blog post once that explains how banker's rounding has kind of nicer properties with respect to statistics as this rounding helps some estimators to be more consistent. I think that was the argument. It doesn't matter what the argument was. It is surprising to say the least. And while this is surprising and shocking, honestly, it probably doesn't make much of a difference because it doesn't happen too often that you get exactly 0.5, or at least that explains why I was surprised to not have known about this weird rounding thing for so long. If this were such an issue, I would probably have realized this early on in my R career, but I didn't. So I guess it's not much of an issue. But in any case, Janitor has the solution for you when you do need this more common rounding and that comes via the round half up function from the janitor package and this one does rounding as you'd expect again a nice convenience function you could live without something like this but it's nice to have this at your disposal so that you don't have to think about how to implement it when you need something like this and even better you can even round to arbitrary fractions you can use the round to fraction argument and in there you just have to specify the denominator and in case you want to round two quarters, you could use the denominator four, and this will round to the next quarter. In this case, this doesn't make much sense because these things are already halves. So let's start out with something like 0.6. And that way you see that everything is rounded to the next quarter, but we can also put some weird number in here to show you that you do really round two quarters. And that's a convenient thing that Janitor gives you. Even more convenient is the ability to find duplicates. You see, you could take a look at the Star Wars data set. It has 14 columns and maybe you just want to look at the first couple of them. So let's just take these. And from this data, you might want to find observations that are similar with respect to certain characteristics. And this is where you can use the get dupes function because it finds duplicates for you depending on characteristic that you use. So if you want to get duplicates with respect to, say, the eye color and the hair color, then you can run that function and you will see that it gives you all the duplicates where 
things are similar and it will show you the two columns that you have picked as the first one and then you see that all of these names from the star wars universe which i don't really recognize because i'm not that much into star wars but all of these seem to have a black eye color and no hair color and that way you can find duplicates quite easily and you can use as many duplicate characteristics as you want and here you'd see that luke skywalker and anakin skywalker are apparently similar as defined by these five variables who would have thought that even I, as a non-Star Wars kind of guy, am not totally shocked by this result. Oh, by the way, this reminds me, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Or if you enjoyed this video a lot, feel free to also leave a comment. And now let's get back to the video. Now, the last couple of functions were kind of nice convenience function, but there is one more powerful framework that I want to show you. And that is the table framework. You see, Janitor gives you tables, not tables, but tables. What I often like to do is to just count things and then calculate the percentage of how often a specific count appears in a data set. So for example, what I do is I take a data set like the MPG data set from ggplot and then I throw the count function on top of that and counting the things that are in the class column, the ones that are currently not displayed. And I'd also usually sort the thing so that I do get counts. And here I'd see that SUVs appear 62 times in that data. And if I want to get the percentages, I just throw a mutate on top of that and compute the proportions by dividing the column n by the sum of all the things that are in that column. And if I execute this, I do get a proportion column. So all of that isn't that surprising because it's basic calculations that you've probably learned early on in your R journey, in particular in your tidyverse journey. But what I want to show you here is that the table function from the janitor package makes it really easy to do these kind of calculations in a faster way. You see, all you have to do is to use the table function, throw your data set in there, and then specify that you want to look at the class column. And that way you do get exactly the same information. The only thing that's a bit tedious about this is that it isn't a tibble. Let's just make this into one by calling as tibble. And that way you have a nicer output in the sense that it shows you the the format of the columns and the data set isn't nicely sorted like we've seen before. So you'd have to, to arrange yourself and then do descending on n and then you'd get the same thing. But this doesn't save you that much work because you have to do other work instead. But you can fix that by automatically changing the print function of tables. I don't want to go into too many details here. Let me just say that I overwrite the print function or things of the class table via a function that I've declared on my own. And in there, I just by default make everything into a table. And then depending on whether the name n, like the one that it produces when it counts one thing, when that is in the column names, I do the sorting and do a print then. And in all the other cases, I just throw janitor clean names on top of that and print them. So if you do that, if you load this as you load the janitor package if you override the print function from the janitor package for the tables then you can save all of this part here and you get the nice output immediately so that way you can use the table function with nice output and what's even better is that you can use the other functionalities that table gives you you see if you just create a fruits vector that you fill by randomly sampling from the fruit vector that is part of R. If you do that, you do have a random vector full of fruits. And the nice thing now is that table just works on vectors as well, which is a huge improvement over count. Count only works with data frames, table works on vectors too, which I find very convenient. And even cooler, if you take the MPG data set again and pass it to table, you can use not only one counting variable, but others as well. Say if you want to use the trends column, then you get immediately a data set that counts not only one variable, but multiple combinations. And better yet, you can also take this code and add yet another variable to this, like the FL column, 
and that way you get a list of tables. So table is an easy way to do simple counting like one way, two way and three way counts. And it also works on vectors like the fruits vector. And now to round it all off, you can also style the appearance of the tables. For example, if we look at our data set from before, like the one, the first count, let's just throw this out here. I just want to have this in a similar code structure. And now what you can use is one of the many adorn functions that help you style the tables. Here we could add totals and that way you will also get a totals column. This isn't particularly convenient in this kind of setting, but in the two way setting, it works exactly the same. And there you have a totals column for each of those categories as well. And if you don't like the formatting of the percentages here, you could use adorn percent formatting. And that way you have characters instead of doubles in here. The same thing doesn't immediately work here because right now we don't have any percentages in here. What you can do is adorn those percentages, which means to add them. So that way you do have percentages instead of numbers, and then you can format them. But if you also want to see the counts, then you can also adorn and add the ends back in. And that way, you got some room here, you do also see the counts combined with the percentages. And if you forgot what the variable for these categories are, you can also adorn a title. And the cool thing about all of this is that if you, if you pass the data to cable from Nitter, do the same thing here, and then render your document, you will see that you have nice tables for this. So as for tables, it's kind of neat that this works pretty fast. Of course, when you want to do very elaborate tables and not only those counts here, it might be helpful to use some other package like GT or style the knitter table here some more. But in principle, if you just need a quick and fast table of the counts and the proportions in your data set, then table with the adorn functions combined with cable is a nice way to go. So with that, we have completed our tour of the generator package. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed this video, then you might also like my upcoming data cleaning masterclass, which you can find via the link that should pop up now. Follow the link if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.